for some of us, we love wakeboarding and water skiing so much that we just have to extend the season as long as possible. With a hot water shower, you can extend that season a lot longer because you can warm up your wetsuit and after you're done, you can kind of shower off and have a nice warm water on your body so it helps keep you nice and warm. So let's take a look at the layout of my hot water shower and let's get going. All right, here's my layout for the hot water shower. First, I need to start with the engine block and I'm gonna tap in with the quarter inch screws and then go from hot to cold. And I wanna use a T. I'll go to a, a filter, which the sponge is used as the pump and then I wanna go all the way to the hose so I can use it as a hot water shower. From the hose, I need to go all the way up to my dashboard and then I can plug in the the switch and then I need to connect the power obviously and then I'll be good to go. And here's my hose that I'm gonna use as well. It's a half inch hose. So I just took out my drain plug and I'm gonna switch it in with the nice clean brass and this will be able to go from my heater core, my hot water, and I'll be able to connect it with the hose. I'm gonna put it right back in there. All right, so I made sure to use plumber's tape on those connectors and a half inch tightener on the hose. So now I'm gonna connect that hose on the engine block for the hot water and I'll be good to go. Now that I have the clamps on and the hose connected, it's time to connect the hose to the cold water. We are at the cold water intake right here and the impeller is here and the water is going up to the top of the engine. And this is where it is pressurized, that is very important. On the other side, it's not pressurized, but once it goes through the impeller, this hose right here is all pressurized. And so I cut the hose right here and I got a one inch T with a half inch barb coming out all the way down and it goes to the back of the engine. I used a few hose clamps and tightened it down, made sure it was nice and tight, brought the hot water and cold water valves on the other side so you can adjust it fairly easily. So the cold water is coming underneath the engine and up to this cold water valve right here. And we have the hot water coming out of the heater core and the valve is right here. And those two hoses come back all the way over to this T that is located right here which goes over to the water filter and all the way over back to the pump. Those two hoses, the hot water and the cold water come back to the T right here and then goes through a water filter, which is the second water strainer. And it goes back and I fished it through all the way back underneath the gas tank and up and over here. And my pump is located right here right on the inside here, upside down. And the hose comes down and comes right out here. So you have the hot water shower and you're able to spray yourself off nice and easily. Let's take a further look at the pump, electrical install and how I wired it all the way up to the dashboard. The hose goes back around the tank, up, and there's the pump and it comes down and out. For the ground wire, I fished it all the way up on this top railing, back through the dashboard and on the back of this panel where the shower circuit is, there's a spot where you can attach the wire for the ground. Now the issue that I had was the power because I wanted it to turn on and off when you turn the ignition on and off and I didn't always want it to stay hot. So I had to find a spot where it would turn on and off only when you turn the ignition on and off. For the power, I ran the power back, down, and through. And right on the back here, The wire is fished right on this solenoid. 
Now the next thing is, is the testing phase. We got the power connected and all of the plumbing for the cold water and hot water. And I strongly recommend testing it outside of the water in case one of those hoses isn't tied properly. So what we're gonna do is get here, turn on the water. So we got the fake lake and we're gonna go start it up real quick. All right, everything sh looks pretty clear. We've got all the hoses tightened up and everything's tied down. We got the electricity working the way we want it to. And now let's start it up and see if it works. Before I turn the hot water shower on, I want to look at all the hoses and see if they're leaking and if they are I need to turn the engine off and address it if I need to add any more tape or glue, I will, but let's check it all out. Now that we see everything's working and we don't see any leaking, which is really good, we want to actually turn it on and pressurize the system. So I'm going to push the shower shower button. You can see the light is illuminated, which means it's on. And the pump just turned on. We got everything connected. It doesn't look like we have any leaks or of that sort. And the pump is running. We got the hose. And we can water the trees with our boat. And what you want to do is fine tune these valves over here. Make sure these valves are the way you want it depending on how hot your boat runs and how hot or cold the water is. You'll have to adjust these, val these valves. And just like you clean and check this filter like you should, you should also be and checking this little filter as well, even though it's after the other one. If you should check it, which is very important. But everything looks like it's running, it's not leaking anything. The pump turns off at 50 psi, which is very nice. And if I want to, I can get a longer hose to go in the back, but right now it works out pretty well. So try out your hot water shower help extend your season and it should work out pretty well. Thanks for watching.